G'day, g'day. This is Cece from Generation Wellness Global. And um, today I wanted to discuss something that is not often embraced or discussed. I wanted to talk about um, certain uh, entities that can influence. And um, so I've got a couple of quotes here that just kind of set the stage nicely. Um, Brigham Young actually spoke at the funeral of his counselor, Jedediah Grant, and he said, do you not think that brother Jedediah can do more good in the spirit world than he could here? When he was here, the devils had power over his flesh. He warred with them and fought them and said that they were around him by millions and he fought them until he overcame them. So it is with you and I, you never felt a pain an ache or felt disagreeable or uncomfortable in your bodies and minds, but what an evil spirit was present causing it. Do you realize that the ague, the fever, the chills, the severe pain in the head, the pleurisy or any pain in the system from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet is put there by the devil? You do not realize this, do you? I say but little about the matter. You have the rheumatism. Do you realize the devil put that upon you? No, you say, I got wet, caught a cold, thereby got rheumatism. The spirits that afflict us and plant disease in our bodies, pain in the system, and finally death have control over us so far as the flesh is concerned. That's from the Journal of Discourses um, 4133 is the reference for that. Um, now, Joseph Smith said that we need to search into and contemplate the darkest abyss and the broad expanse of eternity. Um, so we have to go deep and not get stuck there, but to understand it because you can't fight an enemy without knowing who they are and how they work. And I think that's that's what he was trying to say. And it's really interesting that um, Sister Nelson said that this they knew that October was going, the October conference was going to be something very singular and important and special because of the amount of resistance and attack that they got beforehand. Um, and I know um, Jared on Christian Homestead, love Jared. If you haven't gotten Christian Homestead, go on, have a look because it's amazing. Um, but I know he was talking about secret company combinations and getting Anton Roberts and that sort of thing. But also we need to, so I wanted to kind of look a little bit more at like, well, what about the spiritual? Because we know that um, there are armies that are not in the flesh uh, on the earth and they don't want us to succeed in what we're doing either. And that is, I just thought that, that Brigham Young's quote was really interesting. And um, he talks about that any ache or pain or any disagreeable feeling, any uncom uncomfortable feeling in your body, anything is um, is those, uh, those darker forces working on you. Now, I want to expand a little bit on that because... I'm, I absolutely agree with him, but I, I think that it gives half of the picture because the other half is that it's our fears and negative beliefs and negative thoughts and things like that that allow them that power to step in and influence us. Does that make sense? Like they're trying to feed those things into us as well for sure, but um it's our stuff. And that's, so this is the work that I do. I try and help people find what that is so that they can repent for that, hand that over, be cleansed of that. And then they are less able to be influenced in that way. Um, now we're not going to be perfected in this lifetime. Um, got a lot of that work to do, but the more we do that work, um, the more I just, you know, the prophet talks about finding the joy in repentance and it's about handing that stuff over that gives Satan some power and influence over us, right? And I um, had another thought and I've just completely lost it, so I'll come back to it. But, you know, we 
the more that we find those things, those negative thoughts, those negative feelings, the underlying fears or negative beliefs that hold us back from our true power and purpose and um, becoming more Christ-like, right? That's what we're here to do. We're here to grow and become more Christ-like. And they are going to take any little blip in our in our mind um you know and I think I feel like this is why uh the prophet encouraged us to clear contention out of our homes and out of our lives you know we're encouraged to have virtuous thoughts but that is like such a huge undertaking just to make sure all of your thoughts are good and pure right but if we watch them and pay attention to them we can certainly start to do that work um and I know that since the prophet did talk about removing contention from the, our homes and our hearts, I've really paid attention to that. You know, like if um, if my kids start bickering or something, I will feel the energy change. And I'm like, I know that there are dark things around us that are going to jump in if we don't start praying and um dealing with what's going on and choosing a different path and that's really hard because kids aren't going to always <laughs> they're not going to always choose um to not fight with their siblings but you know we can strive and that's what we're here to do and we can repent quickly and that's why the prophet encourages us to repent quickly daily um because we don't want to allow any more power or influence over us than what they've already got. Um, and we can feel that that is even more present than it has been previously, I think. I thought this was also um, interesting. President George Q. Cannon said, we do not sufficiently realise the importance of keeping guard upon ourselves. Um, so again, pure thoughts, um, pure feelings, and clearing contention you know all the things we've been encouraged to do repenting so that we can be a clearer vessel so we do not sufficiently realize the importance of getting, keeping guard upon ourselves upon our feelings and of the resisting of resisting the influences that surround us these are influences in the atmosphere that are invisible to us that while we are here upon the earth we ought to resist with all our might mind and strength influences that are opposed to the spirit of god if our eyes were open to see the spirit world around us we should feel differently on this subject than we do we would not be so unguarded and careless and so indifferent whether we had the spirit and power of god with us or not but we would be continually watchful and prayerful to our heavenly father for his holy spirit and his holy angels to be around us to strengthen us and to overcome every evil influence that's from President George Q. Cannon, um, Journal of Discourses 11, 29 to 30. So I feel like we used to talk a lot more openly about this stuff than we do now. And But having said that, April conference, um, President Russell M. Nelson did talk about um, his wording was learn how God works but he referenced um Moses interaction um the book of Moses and if you if you know the book of Moses um the first chapter is about Moses learning how God works who God who he is in relation to God and then he gets tempted by Satan and he learns how to cast him out and I thought that was really interesting that that Russell M. Nelson has suggested we <laughs> learn how God works. And um, so I think that um, I think that everything that the prophet has been teaching us and guiding us and encouraging us to do is so that we can hear him, hear God, more fully more effectively so that we recognize when god's speaking and we recognize when it's the things of the world or satan or his influence speaking and that when we do know that it is something dark we learn to cast it out um i think that that is something 
we we're we're taught it we're taught it in the book of moses we're taught it in the temple we 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 need we need to uh not lean on our own understanding and follow <laughs> the guidance of the prophet and the teachings and um we i think that there's so There's so much that we can uh, we can support ourselves to be protected spiritually and physically, temporally, if we realize the power that we have to cast him out. Go and read the book of Moses again. <laughs> um to to keep him out by repenting for every little negative thought feeling anything um now the reason that i um can help people do this is because quite often sometimes what we're holding is deep and subconscious and so i can help guide to what that is i can help guide the person to what that is and then that can be brought out and um sometimes it just needs to be acknowledged and handed over right because we know that the atonement is there. And I was having this conversation with someone recently who said they were really struggling. Um, they felt like they were repenting, but they didn't feel like they were receiving the atonement and that that was being fully applied in their lives. And my comment was, that's just your stuff. <laughs> because we know that the atonement, it, it's been made. We know that by his stripes we may be healed. It is all down to us and our faith and our repentance and us learning to be more Christ-like, that we can have um, greater capacity for love and goodness and light and greater. The more light we have, the more we're going to be targeted. <laughs> That's why all of the prophets and apostles, the prophet and apostles were all targeted before the October conference. But um, we have more strength and resilience and protection and they have less. I, I kind of think of it, you know, if you think of it like you've got a force shield or something, um, you know, the protection of the spirit. And if there is something in us, uh, a negative feeling, something we're holding onto, a resentment, a hurt, it's kind of like creating a little weak spot in that. And trust me, if you give... <laughs> If you give the enemy a little weak spot, he sticks his foot in there and opens a big door. Um, so we need to make sure that we're um, being strengthened by through that process of repentance and, um, yeah. So, and, and by making good choices, by choosing to get contention out of our homes and out of our hearts and all of those things because they create those weak spots that allow the enemy to have power. And um, so I just thought, you know, like we, that quote by Brigham Young just, um, it's always stood out to me that there are a lot more forces at play um, than what we see, <laughs> a lot more. And we know that, you know, we know, um about the war in heaven before we came here and we know that those spirits were cast out and they are not happy about the fact that they don't get bodies and so we we kind of we know this stuff but we don't I don't think we fully understand that we have power to do something about their influence um you know and um maybe it's different for me because I'm a convert so I have a lot of repentance to do um and um you know if you were brought up in the church maybe you have been brought up with more ability to love and trust and have faith because that's what you were modeled and that's what you were gifted in your childhood and um that's a really beautiful thing don't take it for granted <laughs> Don't take it for granted, please. Um, I don't think you fully appreciate, as someone who um, had a different experience, I don't think you fully appreciate 
what a gift that is. Um, but, you know, we can always do more. We can always strive more. And um, it's about lifting each other, right? If you're in a good place or if you've got your temple work sorted, like there are so many of us <laughs> who are, feel that urgency, feel that, you know, like, how how can you lift someone else? How can you, um, yeah, how can we serve each other so that we can move this work forward? Because we're supposed to be gathering. We're supposed to be gathering a people who are ready to receive the Saviour. And that means we need to help each other be there and be ready and have done all that we can do. And um, so thanks for joining. I hope that this wasn't too off the wall, but, you know, I'm quoting <laughs> quoting prophets here. <laughs> so, and I think that, you know, like it's something that isn't spoken. I, I feel like it's being spoken of more in the world now, but not as often by people in the church. And so people who... um are outside of that might look for new age things or other spiritual things that they feel answer that question for them because we're being a, um, kind of treading very gently around the subject. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, it's, it's about those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, right? So if you found this, and it speaks to you, great. If it doesn't and you think I'm crazy, that's fine too. <laughs> um, not for you. Uh, so I would love to hear your thoughts, your experiences. You know, like there are just so many amazing, powerful things going on in the world and we're going to see the greatest manifestations in the coming days. So it's going to be super exciting and challenging and amazing and uh, I'm looking forward to all the good things and not so much the bad things. But we have we have God on our side, so we're okay. And um, yeah, so I would love to hear from you if you have something you'd like to share. Um, and please like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for joining. Have an amazing beautiful blessed day trying to keep contention out of your home and out of your family and out of your heart and doing all of your repentance work um I think I need another lifetime to get through it all but I'm doing my best and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ amen <laughs>